Uh, good afternoon, fellow park foresters. Uh, my name is Bill Patterson. I'm a commander for the Southern American Legion of Park Force. Uh, I'd like to welcome you all here to a Memorial Day Remembrance Service. start with the opening prayer. Uh, Rabbi Leo Walkow has retired from uh, B'nai Huda. He's also a 16-year veteran army chaplain. I'd like to have Rabbi Walkow come up and give us our opening prayer. Nature's ebb and flow, God's eternal law abides. When tears dim our vision and grief clouds our understanding, we often lose sight of God's eternal plan. Yet we know that growth and decay, life and death all reveal the divine purpose. God, who is our support in the struggles of life, is also our hope in death. We have set God before us and shall not despair. In God's hands are the souls of all the living and the spirits of all flesh. Under divine protection we abide by God's hope and comforted. Thus do we come today to comfort one another and to memorialize our country's defenders young and old, living with the divine assurance delivered by the prophet Isaiah. Al tira ki imcha ani, al tishta ki ani elohecha. Fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. O God of heaven and earth, God of war and peace, God of life and death, be with us this day. At this time, Miss Ella Sweeney from Cedar Lake, Indiana, will sing the Star Spangled Banner. Presentation of the American Legion Read by Legionnaires Mr. Bob Brown and George Nero.
At this time, I'd like to introduce our guest speaker for today. He's a former Marine and a current village manager, Mr. Thomas K. Mick. Good morning, everybody. I'm glad to see a nice crowd out here. Um, as part of my comments, I'd like to call on Park Forest Mayor John Ostenberg to say a few words. Mr. Mayor? Good morning and welcome to all of you who are here today. This is a beautiful day in Park Forest and we're so happy to have so many of you here to join in this celebration. On behalf of the residents of the Village of Park Forest and certainly on behalf of the Village Board, I want to say a heartfelt thank you to all of those of you who have served in the military and also of course we want to bear tribute to those who have served and who are no longer with us and we have some significant Park Foresters who have unfortunately uh, fallen into that category. There are many, many stories about uh, the creation of Memorial Day, but one of the ones that I always find particularly uh, touching is the one about former African-American slaves who in Charleston, South Carolina, went to a burial ground that had been a former camp for prisoners of war, uh, Union soldiers who had been captured by the Confederacy. And in 1865, they began a tradition of decorating those graves at that cemetery. And many of you know, those of you who are certainly older and my age and older, know that for years we called this day Decoration Day for that very reason that the graves were decorated. And that tradition, of course, grew in other places picked it up. And uh, in Waterloo, New York, I think it was 1866, uh, a tradition of annual celebration began. And as a result of that, we had states that started to adopt this day as a day of tribute to the fallen in combat. And from that, of course, developed a national holiday. And uh, how interestingly, uh, today, uh, it does fall on the actual day. It's, uh, it's, it's May 30th, and that's the day that was always designated up until, uh, I believe it was about 1971, somewhere in there where the Congress changed things to where it would be the fourth Monday. But this fourth Monday happens to fall on the actual Memorial Day, so th there's significance to that. Uh, I, I just want to say one thing that I think is, is very meaningful, and that's that you know, while we give tribute to our fallen heroes, there's so much that our military contributes to our nation that we never think about, we never see. Uh, just recently I had occasion to hear an address by retired General uh, Wesley Clark. And uh, in, in his remarks, he pointed out all of the things that the military research has provided to our country that we take for granted every single day. Things like a GPS system in our car that was started as a result of military research. Flat screen televisions that began as a part of military research. And of course, there's so many other things and there have been improvements in our health as a result of research that was done for various military activities that took place. And so, you know, when we say that we appreciate all that was given to our country by our military, there's a gestalt there. There's more than just combat. There's so many other areas, but today we truly do all in September of, of 2001, uh, there, are, there are many who have served our country in other capacities also in terms of protecting our police and our fire, our paramedics, the work that they have done in keeping our country safe at home is, is a component also of our broader protections uh, and those who give their time, their effort, and unfortunately in some circumstances their lives to the protection of all the rest of us deserve our thanks and our gratitude. And so if we think about those former African-American slaves who honored the first war dead in 1865 in Charleston, let's carry that through and say thank you and honor all who have given themselves for the protection and betterment of our country. Thank you all very much for being here today. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just have a couple of points of emphasis to follow up. Uh, when I, uh, I was called upon by Mr. Ryan and Mr. Uh, 
uh, Kovac for coming out and talking a little bit. Uh, just a couple of things I wanted to reference. Uh, and as a uh, former Marine, I could get up here and talk about all the military history that I'm aware of. Uh, probably would have a Marine Corps slant, and I would apologize for the rest of you in uniform who don't wear the Marine Corps uniform. Uh, I had the chance to travel last weekend, and I found myself at Midway Airport. Uh, and if you've been there recently, there's a huge military display uh, on Concourse A. And I got through to, I got the, the opportunity, uh, you get to the airport, you're there usually a couple hours in advance, and those of you that served in the military, you're really up to wait. So I hurried up and I waited, um, and I read through a lot of the stuff I already knew about the Battle of Midway, Iwo Jima, Okinawa, etc. Uh, places in the, uh, the Pacific Theater, Pearl Harbor. Uh, and then uh, read about some of those uh, occasions that took place in uh, the European Theater as well. As I walked my way around the airport waiting for my plane to take off, I got the chance to see Concourse C. And if you haven't been to Concourse C at Midway Airport, I'd encourage you to check it out next time. It's, it's pretty much dedicated for military travelers. Um, and as I went through there, I saw a number of uh, uh, members of the Navy waiting for their trips to where we were going. And I saw a bunch of uh, uh, young women in the Navy laying on the ground, wrapped up in sleeping bags. I'm not sure what time their flights were. But clearly, I remember being in those shoes. Uh, Memorial Day is. Um, as a former Marine and as your village manager, it's one of my personal quests to make sure that this event continues to grow each year. Um, I think it's very important. Uh, it's probably even more important for us as uh, one of the original planned communities in the country. Uh, as a self-proclaimed GI town, uh, we owe our beginnings of our community to those people that serve our, uh, our community, our country, no matter what the service was. Another thing I'd point out uh, for those of you that don't know all about Park Force is be on the lookout for the CMA award winners uh, and the number of street signs across our community. I think they're dedicated to folks from across Illinois who gave everything. Uh, if you've been uh, recipient of the Congressional Medal of Honor, most times it's posthumously for needs that are tremendous. I've been doing the flag ceremony. Uh, this will be narrated by Auxiliary President Kate Patterson. Our flag detail today consists of Rick Millman, United States Army Reserves, and Sean Patterson, Adjutant, SAL Squadron 1198. Thank you. The flag folding ceremony represents the same religious principles on which our country was originally founded. stars representing the states our veterans served in uniform. The Canton field of blue dresses from left to right and is inverted when draped as a pall on a casket of a veteran who's served our country in uniform. In the armed forces of the United States, of the United States at the ceremony of the retreat, the flag is lowered, folded in a triangle fold, and kept under watch throughout the night as a tribute to our nation's honored dead. The next morning, it is brought out and at the ceremony of Reveille, run aloft as a symbol of our belief in the resurrection of the body. The 
first fold of our flag as a symbol of life. The second fold is a symbol of our belief in the internal life. The third fold is made in honor and remembrance of the veteran departing our ranks who gave a portion of life for the defense of our country to attain peace throughout the world. The fourth fold represents our weaker nature for as American citizens trusting in God, it is to him we turn in times of peace as well as in times of war for his divine guidance. The fifth fold is a tribute to our country for in the words of Stephen Decatur, our country in dealing with other countries may she always be right, but it is still our country right or wrong. The sixth fold is for where our hearts lie. It is with our heart that we pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. The seventh fold is a tribute to our armed forces, for it is through the armed forces that we protect our country and our flag against all her enemies, whether they be found within or without the boundaries of our republic. The eighth fold is a tribute to the one who entered into the valley of shadow of death, that we might see the light of day and to honor mother for whom it flies on Mother's Day. George Washington and the sailors and Marines who served under Captain John Paul Jones and who were followed by their comrades and shipmates in the armed forces of the United States, preserving for us the rights, privileges, and freedoms that we enjoy today. Next up is the reading of Park Force President's Guild of Action by incoming Commander George Kovach. It will be followed by the reading of post 1198 members who have recently passed, most everlasting. Good morning, Park Force. Let us never forget from the Revolutionary War to the current war on terrorism and all the wars in between that sacrifice was made for our freedom. From Park Forest, residents killed in action. Lieutenant Colonel James A. Branch. Warrant Officer Rodney A. Davey. Corporal Terry King. Sergeant John A. Labundi. Private First Class Gary R. McHugh. Private First Class Joseph J. Passavante. Post 1198 members who have recently been called to Post Everlasting. Gary L. Barnett, Dwayne E. Solarier, Richard M. Delaney, Edward Francois, Howard G. Hagemaster, Michael Horatsky, Past Commander John M. Maloney, 
Paul A. Minster. Past Commander William T. Malee. Robert E. Murphy. Frank E. Pegas. William J. Sacalaris. Harold Steve. John C. Sullivan. Past Commander Joel Thomas. And Claude Wyatt. And from our Park First American Legion Auxiliary, Marlene Molly Misiak and Alice Maroney. Thank you. At this time, we'd like to bring Alice Winnie back up. I uh, will be saying, God, God bless the USA. Tomorrow, all the things were gone I'd worked for all my life, and I had to start again with just my children and my wife. I thank my lucky stars to be living here today because the flag still stands for freedom and they can't take that away. And I'm proud to be an American where at least I know I'm free and I won't forget the men who died, who gave that right to me, and I'll gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today, because there ain't no doubt I love this land. God bless the USA. From the lakes of Minnesota. And it's time to stand and say that I'm proud to be an American where at least I know I'm free. And I won't forget the men who died, who gave that right to me. And I'll gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today. Because there ain't no doubt I love this. God, eternal spirit of the universe, grant perfect rest in your sheltering presence to the deceased of our ranks. Let them find refuge in your eternal presence. Let their souls be bound up in the bond of everlasting life. Now,